So, everyone, and welcome to argumentative texts and how to conclude and properly manage your references. Sounds quite interesting, doesn't it? Right now, most of you have already started writing your texts, which is perfect. Um, and now we need to like move into and deep dive into trying to conclude and how to use your references. So that is what this little lecture is going to be about with some proper examples. And just as a quick reminder, when we go through this, I want you guys to know that you can always pause, rewind, listen again, take notes if you do not understand what is being said, and then take that to me in class so that I can give you the answers and hopefully we can all come to a better understanding here. All right? So, let's get to it. So, firstly, we will look at the conclusion, uh, which basically is you restating the thesis, which is the statement that you made in the beginning of your text. You will link this to the rest of uh, rest of a text with the use of a linking word, which we spoke about last time. So check that class if you do not remember it. You will then discuss the thesis in relation to the evidence and the counter evidence that you provided. This is something that you did last time as well. But do not include any new information in your conclusion. The conclusion is only there to summarize what you've already said. Think of, it, think of it like this. Your introduction, that's where you say what you're going to talk about. In the main body of the text, your uh, evidence and your counter evidence in this case is when you talk about what you said you were going to talk about. And the conclusion is where you say, where you talk where you summarize what you've been talking about. So it's only focusing on what's already been said. Remember that. That is important. Uh, if you then believe it to be necessary, you can end your conclusion with a question to the reader. If you feel that, oh, there's something here that I've been talking about that I feel could be like an interesting note at the end just to get the reader thinking. I'll show you an example later. Uh, then end with that. That is something you can do to make it seem a little bit more interesting. Like making the reader think. Forcing the reader to be active. Alright, so let's move on to an example text. And what you're going to see here is two slides of the same text. Uh, the first one I will just read through, and then on the second slide I will try to break it down for you into different things that you will need to look at. Alright, so here we go. Here comes the example. That is all made up by me, so there's no truth to this. I've just made it all up as an example to show you guys. So, here we go. To conclude, the question about legalizing the use of recreational drugs is of utmost importance in today's society. First of all, the legalization of recreational drugs would lead to less use of the black market, and secondly, it will lead to easier access to medicinal marijuana for those who are in need of it. On the other hand, Larson states that the legalization of recreational drugs might lead to higher numbers of hospitalized abusers. With all of this in mind, it is clear that the use of recreational drugs should be legalized. After all, alcohol is legal. Why should not recreational drugs be? Okay, moving on to try and break it down for you. And here comes the breakdown. So, as you can see here, I start with to conclude. And conclude here would be the linking word that goes back to help my reader get through this text. They now know that they are at the end, they're at the conclusion. So moving on, 
The question about legalizing the use of recreational drugs. That is my main thesis for this text. I restate it here in the topic sentence. That's the first thing that happens here. I'm restating what I've already been talking about. And I keep going with it is of utmost importance in today's society. And now, here comes both a linking word, start of a list, and a reference back to what has been written in the main body. So, I say, first of all, now I'm relating back to the first piece of evidence that would have been presented. Going on. The legalization of recreational drugs would lead to less use of the black market. In brackets here, which is typed in blue, ignore this a little bit for now. These are the references. We will talk more about these for your next class. Uh, and just remember, this is my name and like this year, so this is obviously fake. Don't just ignore that for now. It's there as an example. And now I've presented uh, the re uh, reference back to my first piece of evidence, then and secondly should refer to the second piece of evidence that was presented in the main body. So, and secondly, it will lead to easier access to medicinal marijuana for those who are in need of it. Followed by a reference. You need to prove what you say. Uh, what you also can think about here is, because when I start by saying, first of all, at, to at the top of this sentence, you expect that it's going to be something more on this subject. And when I then suddenly say, and secondly, you're like, ah, yeah, there it comes. I start with first of all, then something has to follow. So, moving on. Next you will see, on the other hand. That is also a link, because I've had a list that's presenting arguments or evidence, but logically there should be some counter-arguments coming here, right? Because that's what's been presented in the main body. And there it comes. On the other hand, Larson references, we're talking about him later, states that the legalization of recreational drugs might lead to higher numbers of hospitalized abusers. With all of this in mind, now we're summarizing here, guys, it is clear that the use of recreational drugs should be legalized. This is highlighted because... That is the main thesis that we've been using. We're going back to it again. Just using it over and over to make sure that the reader follows and that we're on track with what we're talking about. And now at the end, I add a little twist for you that I talked about before. Right? You remember? Uh, with a question to the audience or to the reader. To give you some emphasis. To force the reader to be active. So, after all, alcohol is legal, why should not recreational drugs be? So, that's how it goes. That is how a conclusion could look like. So, let's move on. We're almost through this class. So, now we're going to look a little bit at the references. So, what it is and how you guys can use it. So, just to note that for like the next lesson that we're going to have like this, we will go through this in much more detail, so don't be afraid to, like, not taking too much in now and panicking about how to do your references. Just collect your references on the bottom of a page where you're writing, and we'll sort them out later. Now is not the time for that. So, moving on. What is a reference? That is your way to back up your points with relevant expertise. You might not be the expert, you might have an opinion on a matter, but you might not be the expert on it. So that's why you take in some expertise, like someone who's done a study, a professor, whatever, someone who's working in this field. If you're talking about uh, the use of drugs, maybe a doctor, something a doctor has written would be of use, perhaps. It's your way to increase your credibility. How do you make yourself relevant in this field? Why is it important that people read and understand what you're saying? And just to say that there are many different types of referencing. And you're going to ask, why are there so many systems? Well, the devil is in the details here. There are many systems and they serve different purposes. You will have heard, might have heard some of them uh, 
The one we're going to use is called APA. That's by the American Psychologist Association. There's one called MLA, there's Oxford, there's Harvard, there's like Chicago, and so many more, uh, but ASA or AMA and yeah, whatever. Uh, these exist because when you go in depth of looking at different things that you want to write about, some of the details in these things on how you do your references is more appropriate for certain types of themes or topics. So the APA that we're going to use here, I want to use it because with you guys because I think it's it gives you a nice structure. It is not that hard to grasp and it can help you out in the future and it is pretty good to use when it comes to social studies. So it covers a kind of a broad spectrum that you guys might feel relevant. And at the bottom, uh, be, or like below this video, you will find a link uh, where I have given you an example paper from the writing lab that I talked about in the last lesson. So feel free to check that out if you want to see. And that one's quite hard. But if you just want details like on, oh, how do I do my references? Check it out. And you see if you can understand it. If you have questions about it, take them to me and we'll go through them all. All right. Nice. Moving on. Last slide now, guys. So for next week, I just want you to remember these things here. You need to remember to bring a charge computer and headphones. Otherwise, you guys can't work. So please, please, please do that. It helps out a lot. So... The class on Monday will start with you guys writing and it will end with a workshop similar to what we did in the last class that you guys had with me. Perfect. The next homework, like this, will include how do you present your text. Because you're going to present this in front of the class. And we will talk about that then. And the other thing it will take up is how to format your paper after APA. So. Now, what the hell does that mean? That means how do you do your references? How is the, how does the pa uh, paper look? Like, what's the structure? There are rules to that. We'll go through them, and if you succeed in doing that like nicely, then you can always use that structure from that paper. You save it down, and when you need to know, oh, I need to make a paper with this kind of referencing system, you just look at that. And you copy it. And then you got your structure. So remember that. And also, now that we're done, feel free to go back, re-listen to parts, write down questions, bring them to me, and so I can answer you guys in class and help you out as much as I can. Great job. See you guys next week. Have a good one.